Washington Coast Guard team and Shanti Singer, Sean Dagger. I'm Isabel and I will be animating this uh, webinar today. Um, and I'm part of Ships to Shore. And um, I will be presenting in French and in English. So, uh, alors, bienvenue tout le monde à cette présentation, cette session de STIAM complète de l'équipe de garde côtière canadienne et du chanteur Shanti Singer, Sean Dagger. Et pour cette présentation, nous allons parler de la garde côtière canadienne. Um, all right, so we can go ahead with the next slide. Okay. So while we meet today on a virtual platform, we would like to begin by acknowledging the indigenous people of all the lands that we are on today. We do this to reaffirm our commitment and responsibility to improving relationships between nations and improving uh, our own understanding of local indigenous peoples and their cultures. Ships to Shore aims to encourage collective introspection about the current relationships between indigenous and non-indigenous communities as first people, as Canadians, as members of coastal communities, and as people in the marine sector. Alors, avant de commencer cette rencontre virtuelle aujourd'hui, nous aimerions saluer les peuples des Premières Nations des terres sur lesquelles nous habitons. Nous désirons témoigner de notre engagement et de notre responsabilité en but d'améliorer à la fois les liens de réconciliation ainsi que notre compréhension des peuples des Premières Nations et de leur culture. Des navires au rivage vise à encourager l'introspection collective sur les relations actuelles des communautés autochtones et non autochtones, premier peuple canadien, membre des communautés côtières et employé dans le secteur maritime. So what is Ship to Shore? Well, the project Ships to Shore connects young people with Canada's marine sector and sailing through arts and culture, workforce development, civic engagement, and history and heritage. The project has engaged 2,600 and more youth across the country since 2020. You can go on our website if you'd like to learn more, so www.shipstoshore.ca. Alors, qu'est-ce que, qu que des navires au rivage? Alors, le projet des navires au rivage rassemble des jeunes du secteur maritime canadien à la voile par le biais des arts et de la culture, du développement de la main d'œuvre, de l'engagement civique et de l'histoire du patrimoine. Le projet a mobilisé plus de 2600 jeunes à travers le pays depuis 2020. Et si vous désirez en apprendre davantage, vous pouvez visiter notre site Internet au www.shipstoshore.ca And uh, Ships to Shore is located in Thormouth, um, Nova Scotia, the Center for Ocean Ventures and Entrepreneurship, COVE, encourages innovations within the ocean sector. Through their workforce development strategy, they engage in strengthening pathways to careers in the blue economy. And once again, if you would like to learn more, you can go on the website www.coveocean.com. Alors, situé à Darmouth, en Nouvelle-Écosse, le centre, le centre for Venture, pardon me, the Center for Ocean Ventures and Entrepreneurship, que l'on appelle aussi avec l'acronyme COVE, encourage l'innovation dans le secteur océanique. Grâce à sa stratégie de développement de la main d'œuvre, Cove s'engage à renforcer les voies d'accès aux carrières de l'économie bleue. Alors, sans plus tarder, nous allons passer aux gardes de la au, à l'équipe de la garde côtière canadienne. So, without further ado, we will go to the presentation of Dominique Debrosse et Josie Salham. Uh, yeah, so my name's Josie. Uh, I work in recruitment and retention for Coast Guard. I've been with Coast Guard since January. I started in workforce development there, and then I worked my way into recruitment. Um, 
yeah, I'm loving it so far and I'm excited to meet you guys and start the presentation today. Mais bonjour à tous, euh, moi c'est Dominique de Brosse, euh, je travaille au sein de la Garde Côtière depuis fin février, euh, donc euh, je suis dans la région de Québec, la province de Québec, et euh, donc je suis au sein de, avant d'être dans la Garde Côtière, euh, bon, je, je travaillais dans le domaine de la politique, les affaires gouvernementales, donc euh, j'ai un bac en sciences politiques, donc ça démontre que euh, faire partie de la Garde Côtière, donc euh, on peut avoir n'importe quel type de diplôme pour euh, faire partie de de la Côte -Côte puis merci de votre présence. Thank you, uh, Dominique. Okay, so, um, sans plus tarder, without further ado, I think we're going into the breakout rooms. So, um, I hope you're all doing well. For those who missed the intro, my name is Josie, and I work in recruitment and retention for Canadian Coast Guard. I'm also here with my colleague, Jody, and he's going to be answering some questions at the end of the presentation in regards to the Coast Guard College. Um, so working in recruitment, I get to do fun events like this and speak about the Coast Guard and all the awesome things that we do and hopefully teach you a thing or two. So I'm going to start by giving a broad overview of the Coast Guard, and then we're going to go into some of the programs that we offer for future employment opportunities. So the Canadian Coast Guard is a nationally recognized and world leading symbol of service and safety. Our iconic red and white ships, hovercrafts and helicopters represent the federal government's presence. Um, along with 240,000 kilometers of coastline, and it's the longest of any country in the world, actually. And so the Canadian Coast Guard is interested to deliver valuable programs and services to Canadians. Um, as a special operating agency within Fisheries and Oceans Canada, we ensure the safety of all mariners on our waters and pr protect the marine environment as well. So I'm just going to go into some of the programs that we offer. Um, that was just a very broad overview of some of the things that we do, but we also have our aids to navigation program. So this is a program that designs operational systems and monitors their reliability. Um, but really what an aids to navigation is, is a buoy, light or day beacon used to mark certain areas in the water in order to assist mariners in determining things like position and course. Another program we offer is our waterways management program. This helps to keep the water channels clear of vessels and give them important information on water levels and things like bottom conditions. Uh, we also have our MCTS program, so Marine Communications and Traffic Services. This program is essentially the ears and the eyes of the waterway. So they assist in vessel movements and they provide things like navigational information um, to help vessels in distress. We also have a program called Icebreaking. So this program responds to requests for assistance in clearing harbors and ports. Uh, they clear out ice out of the water channels so that vessels can move safely through them. We also have our environmental response program. So this program responds to marine pollution um, and incidents involving the environment. We also have our search and rescue program. And this program coordinates and manages the response to marine incidents. And then we have um, our maritime security program. So this provides analysis on foreign and domestic vessel movements. And then within the Coast Guard, uh, we have the national headquarters in Ottawa, but we actually operate in four regions. So there's Western, Arctic, Central, and Atlantic region. I'm in Sarnia, Ontario, so that's part of the Central region. And that's what we're going to focus on today. Um, there's also a Coast Guard college, and we're going to talk about that later in the presentation. So um, normally on the screen, I would have a little map that has an overview of all of our employees and where they're all located. Um, but just to give you an idea, the Central Region has 1,600 employees um, as of April 2021. And our region also has 43 vessels, two hovercraft, and seven helicopters. So within the, the Central Region itself, there's two sectors. There's the Great Lakes sector and the St. Lawrence sector. Um, but the, there's several working locations in Montjoly, Les Esquim, and Perry Sound, Prescott, and Burlington. The, the three main working locations are in Quebec City, Montreal, and Sarnia, where I'm located. So at Coast Guard, um, there's student job opportunities, and we hire students to fill various positions, both administrative and technical. These people are sometimes lucky to be hired directly on a permanent basis right after their studies. Um, it's a great opportunity for students to get their foot in the door before starting their full-time career with us. Um, one of the options to do this is through a co-op. 
So if you ever need a co-op as part of your studies, keep in mind that we offer student employment opportunities through that field. Um, this winter term, we aren't accepting any students, but um, during the spring and summertime we do. So that's something to keep an eye out for. And we also hire and train candidates each summer to prepare them to be intra rescue boat crew members. So this is a summer job only. Um, successful candidates are trained in search and rescue operations with our search and rescue team. The training lasts 16 days and begins shortly after the end of the school year. Upon successful completion, candidates are assigned as crew members to our intra rescue boat stations. So it's a pretty cool program. I also had a video for this too. So I'm gonna put that in the chat for you guys so you can um, learn more about that program if you're interested. Um, and then I'm just gonna go through some of the positions that are offered. So there's several positions available on board the ship that um, require little training and we're constantly recruiting for. So one of them being an assistant engineer or a deckhand. So the assistant engineers perform engine room safety patrols to ensure that the engines and systems are functioning properly. Uh, they assist in mechanical officers with routine inspections, machinery repairs, and general engine room maintenance. And the deckhands, um, their work varies from day to day, but some examples of things they do is performing general maintenance to keep the ship clean and safe, uh, loading and unloading and handling cargo and participating in helicopter operations. Um, on the ship, we also have cooks and stewards as well. So cooks, as you would expect, are responsible for the preparation of meals in, on board the ship. They establish menus based on the Canadian Food Guide and follow all health and hygiene standards. The stewards are responsible for cleaning the officers' cabins, the ship's dining rooms and certain common areas, as well as serving meals. So, uh, and now getting into our Coast Guard College. So there's three programs that we offer at our Coast Guard College, which is located in Sydney, Nova Scotia. Um, we have the Engineer Officer Program, the Navigation Officer Program, and the MCTS Officer Program. The Engineer Officer and Navigation Officer Programs are for four years, and these four years are paid schooling, which is really cool, um, in French and English, and you are automatically offered a bachelor's degree upon graduation in nautical science technology and you're guaranteed a job at the end of your studies. The MCTS officer program is six months paid in French and English and you automatically get a guaranteed job in that as well. Um, to save some time, just going to skip over a couple slides because I know that Sean has to do his presentation or his portion of the presentation. So let's see here. We already went into all the programs at the college. So um, just as you can see, we have a wide variety of career pathways you can take um, if you're interested in working for our organization. So in addition to the seagoing positions that I just spoke about, we also offer positions in engineering, welding, painting, carpentry. Um, there's even nursing and of course business in a position similar to what I'm doing. Um, there, there's a lot of different avenues you can take if you're interested in working for Coast Guard. And I'm going to end the presentation here just because we're very short for time. I'm sorry about that. I'll make sure to send you guys the presentation as well as any videos or links that I have so you can watch them at your own time as well. Um, and if you have any questions, I still have Jody here, so uh, he'd be happy to answer them for you. And I'm just going to look in the chat to see. Just give you a minute. What made me decide to join the Coast Guard? I actually heard about the Coast Guard through a family member who works here and she gave it a glowing review. Um, it's an awesome place to work. It's got one of the best pensions in Canada, amazing benefits. Um, and I'm just really proud to work for an organization that does work like this to protect our waterways. It's, I'm proud to say I work for Coast Guard. What about you, Jody? 
Yes, agree totally. It's a beautiful organization to work for. And how I started, I uh, I did 28 years in the Canadian Armed Forces. So uh, anyway, retired from there and then um, still want something to do, still young. So um, my skill sets for the military and leadership and everything like that were, were a great transition. And um, six years ago, I started as a liaison officer. And just last year, I became a um, recruitment officer and really, really enjoying this position. And um bringing, um, you know, new applicants and, and, and people into the officer training program, which is uh, is a beautiful program, um, you know, and, and a long career afterwards, guaranteed job, like Josie said. Um, yeah, it's just, uh, it's, it's a beautiful organization to work for. Yeah. Okay. Well, if there's no more questions after that. Oh, okay. So what are the main differences between being in the Coast Guard and being in the Navy? Jody, what do you find different between? Sure, Coast sure. Yeah. So, so the, for the big difference is, again, um, um, the, um, the Navy, they're, they're the ones that are carrying weapons and things like that. Okay. Uh, so we don't carry weapons in, in the Coast Guard. Um, Again, we're we're the protectors of the coastline, Josie Josie said. So we're the ones that our mandate is to protect the Canadian waters. Now, the Navy, on the other hand, are are more uh, like I said, rigid, uh, more more combative style, and we'll go all over the world, right, defending um, Canada's interests all around. So, but the difference between us and them is we're going to stick here and we're going to hang around Canadian coastline and make sure our waterways are safe. Any other questions on the college or programs? Is there a particular rescue story that you could share? I... Um, me, myself, no. I'm, I'm trying to think of maybe one. Have you heard a story that you remember, Jody? Um, well, I was out on the, I'm going to keep it short. Um, was out on the Hudson in 2018 and, um, it was, we were probably about 200 nautical miles off of Newfoundland on the Grand Banks. And you now to take it, this is my, my trip to get out to, um, understand what life is like at sea and what the, my officer cadets go through at the college when they go to sea. So I want to get a better, better understanding of that. So in November of 2018, I, went out on the Hudson for, for a whole month, the trip, the 28 day trip. And um, unfortunately, as you can tell, November on the, the North, the North Atlantic is not the greatest weather. So we do, we had some really bad weather. Um, and then um, not too long ago on the, on the bridge, you could hear a Panamanian and tanker um, calling out for help. They were coming across the pond from overseas and uh, they lost power and they started taking on water. So here's where MCTS comes in also, the Marine Communications Traffic Services. So we end up relaying from our ship to MCTS in Placentia, Newfoundland, um, about this, this uh, um, vessel in distress. Um, so they, we thought we were going to get dispatched to go help help the Panamanian tanker, but they end dispatch in dispatching another vessel out of St. John's. But prior to them arriving there, the vessel was able to regain power and um, move forward onto St. John's itself. But that was... Uh, that was a, a little a bit of a hairy one that I, I've encountered. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's really cool. Uh, she also asked, what's your favorite part of being in the Coast Guard? I think my favorite part of being in the Coast Guard, kind of what I was getting into in the presentation, is just all the different types of people that you encounter and all the different departments that you work with within Coast Guard. Like I work in recruitment but I've been able to work with people in environmental response, in search and rescue, um, people like Jody who work for the college. Like you get to meet so many different types of people because our organization is so broad. And I think it's really interesting. You get to learn a lot. A lot of things outside your own department, I should say, yeah. Okay, well, I believe most people are back from the breakout rooms. Um, hopefully you enjoyed these presentation. I um, 
Alors, bienvenue tout le monde dans l'appel principal. On espère que vous avez apprécié les présentations euh, dans les chambres virtuelles. Alors, um, so we will be presenting now Sean Dagger, who is a singer, arranger, and um, composer. And he will be playing today a new set of songs. And so, nous allons maintenant passer à Sean Dagger, qui est un chanteur, arrangeur et compositeur. Et pour aujourd'hui, il va nous présenter euh, des nouvelles chansons. Donc, euh, Sean, c'est à toi. Down to you, Sean. Hello, everybody. Bonjour tout le monde. So, I'll just say a little bit about what I do. I'm a, a, a singer of sea shanties. Well, generally speaking, I'm a, a, a folk musician and arranger and composer. I do all different kinds of music and um about uh eight years ago i got hired to sing uh, all the the sea shanties on a video game series called assassin's creed and so that instantly became a global success the game did and so i started getting people contacting me about sea shanties so i got i got into it a lot and i i put out a record of sea shanties and toured around a lot with that and then uh, during COVID I, I started a, a series um, because we couldn't play any live concerts so I started a series in in my basement in my music room called the shanty of the week where every week I would teach a, a song teach how to how to sing it but I'd also also give uh, information about the the the, 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 the song's use on the ship and a little bit of a historical background and then I would sing the song and I, I made I was my own backing up crew so I would sing the backup voices on top and during the song I explained some of the terms that uh, that that come up in the song you know what this means or I put a picture of what it is we're singing about and I did this basically because I'm I'm not from a, a nautical background I uh, not I, I'm not a sailor so basically if I had a question if I was singing something I thought Jesus I wonder what this means, so I would put the explanation, assuming that maybe other people would have the same question. So that's what I've been doing for the last sort of year and a half. And then Shanties got really popular um, in in January with the Shanty talk, and um, and that was a great uh, that was a great time. So I've been doing a lot of this stuff for the last little while. Now I understand uh, that the class that's here um, already participated in the workshop, so I'm not going to go over my I have a page here of my shanty lesson that I that I give I won't I won't go over it too much because they've already heard it and uh, I'll do some different songs that um, that I, I don't normally do in the in the shanty lesson so I was going through my list of songs that I did I, I did 60 of these uh, shanty of the week videos and um, so I was I was going through them trying to decide which which other ones uh, which other ones to do and I was going through and I was like oh yeah I remember this one oh this is a good song oh that's a good song so um maybe Gabrielle Blay Jones if you I'll start with I'm going to start with the very first one I did it called uh, blow boys blow and but in the meantime if your class has any requests uh, of songs that um that they would like to hear I'll see if I can do them I I I can't guarantee that I can sing all the songs partly because the lyrics might not be okay um, so this one is a, a halyard shanty, which uh, um, which is for hauling yards of lines, either for uh, for usually for for moving the the booms around and hoisting sails. So this is a song called "Blow Boys Blow." Okay, now you, I'm going to sing a line. I say, "Blow me, boys! I long to hear you." And everyone responds with, "Blow, boys, blow." And then I sing the second line, oh, blow me, boys, and I long to hear you. And everyone says, blow me, bully, boys, blow. So those are your two parts, okay? Blow, boys, blow. And then and then your second one is, blow me, bully, boys, blow. Yeah, I'll do the Wellerman after this one. Good suggestion. Okay. <laughs> so here we go. We're going to sing a few verses of blow, boys, blow, okay? And I, I, you can stay muted if, you, if you're shy. But I want to see those lips moving for those of you <laughs> and the class. You, you can you can you can belt it. You can uh, bother the neighboring classes is basically what you should do. Because here we go. I'm going to start at the next verse because we just heard the fat verse. A Yankee ship came down the river. Blow, boys, blow. Her spars were of gold and her masts were of silver. Blow me, bully boys, blow. 
Uh, how do you know she's a Yankee clipper? Blow, boys, blow. By the blood and the guts that flow out from her scuppers. Blow, me bully boys, blow. How do you know she's a lanky liner? Blow, boys, blow. By the stars and the bar streaming out behind her. Blow, me bully boys, blow. How do you know she's a Yankee packet? Blow, boys, blow. Oh, she fired her guns and we heard the racket. Blow, me bully boys, blow. Who do you think is the chief mate of her? Blow, boys, blow. Some ugly case who hates poor sailors. Blow, me bully boys, blow. And the cook was Jack, the Boston beauty. Blow, boys, blow. And the steward had to learn his duty. Blow, me bully boys, blow. What do you think we had for supper? Blow, boys, blow. Oh, handspike hash and a roll in the scuppers. Blow, me bully boys, blow. Her sides were old and her sails were rotten. Blow, boys, blow. The old man's charts he had forgotten. Blow, me bully boys, blow. Blow, me bully boys, blow. So that's Blow, Boys, Blow. Thank you, Shanty of the Week, number one, <laughs> September 14th, 2020. Yeah, it brings back memories. I haven't actually sung that one since, since then. The Wellerman was requested. This is the song that got really popular on TikTok in uh, in January, and I sort of resisted learning it. Oh, everybody else is doing it, so I I won't. But recently, the last uh, two or three weeks, I, I actually did learn it. So I, I don't know it super well. I might make mistakes. There are lots of words. You guys know the the um, the chorus is. Uh, as, oh, is it, Soon may the wellerman come to bring us sugar and tea and rum. One day when the tonguing is done, we'll take our leave and go. That's the chorus, right? One day when the tonguing is done, that's cut, cutting out the, the, the tongue of the whale. Right? This is a whaling song, not strictly speaking a shanty. So here's a song. There once was a ship that put to sea, and the name of the ship was the Bully of Tea. The winds came up and her bowed it down, oh blow me bully boys blow. Soon may the wellerman come to bring us sugar and tea and rum. One day when the tonguing is done, we'll take our leave and go. She had not been two weeks from shore when down on her her right whale bore. The captain cried all hands and swore he'd take that whale in tow. Soon may the wellerman come to bring us sugar and tea and rum. One day when the tonguing is done, we'll take our leave and go. Before the boat had hit the water, the whale's tail came up and caught her hands to the side, harpooned and fought her when she dived down below. Soon may the wellerman come to bring us sugar and tea and rum. One day when the tonguing is done, we'll take our leave and go. No line was cut, no whale was freed, but the captain's mind was not of greed. He belonged to the whaleman's creed, and she took that ship in tow. Soon may the wellerman come to bring us sugar and tea and rum. One day when the tonguing is done, we'll take our leave and go. For forty days and forty more, the line grew slack, then taut once more. Our boats were lost, there were only four, and still that whale did go. Soon may the wellerman come to bring us sugar and tea and rum. One day when the tonguing is done, we'll take our leave and go. As far as I've heard, the fight's still on. The line's not cut and the whale's not gone. The wellerman makes his regular run, so blow me, bully boys, blow. Soon may the wellerman come to bring us sugar and tea and rum. One day when the tonguing is done, we'll take our leave and go. Oh, soon may the wellerman come to bring us sugar and tea and rum. One day when the tonguing is done, we'll take our leave and go. Hey, thanks. Thanks a lot. So the uh, the Wellerman refers to the the, the Weller company in uh, in I think it was an Australian company, but this this song is sort of takes place off of New Zealand, um, and the Wellerman, strictly speaking, was anyone who worked for that company, and uh, but in this case, it refers to the supply ship that uh, you know one one day when the oh, I'm glad you were singing along, Gabriel. Uh, <laughs> the the supply ship that um, that that well supplies the, uh, the the whaling vessels that keeps them keeps them in provisions. 
so that's what this song is about and i just love the story that you know the i mean i, I suppose it's a bit like uh it's a bit like moby dick you know the captain and uh and the whale in this eternal battle i love that the last verse you know as 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 far as i know the fight's still on you know this the song's from 1860 it's an epic battle oh wow it's an old one yeah 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 the, the golden age of whaling so that's so there we've had okay we, we had a halyard shanty the first one was blow boys blow um the 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 wellerman it's it could be used as a capstan shanty that's for turning around the the capstan um but it's more likely a a, a forecastle song or foxel song uh if the forecastle is the um on a lot of ships it was and uh, jody can correct me on this or anyone can correct me on this the part on the the sort of hump at the front of the ship under which was the crew's quarters where the um you know the, the singing for fun would would take place rather than the singing for actually coordinating work so that song is is more suited to that kind of activity so that's with a captain or a forecastle song and a halyard shanty there's this other uh song that i've been wanting to to come back to um it's called the the rio grande and or rio grande i suppose is the proper pronunciation and, but it's not about the river that uh between texas and uh and mexico it's um it's this one is actually about a river of the same name in uh for for deck on sailing okay thank you um the 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 rio grande in uh there are two of them in brazil and this is the one but it's farther to the south so if you were heading off on a on a, a trip say from uh from liverpool you'd basically cross the atlantic sort of go diagonally down and you'd, you'd hit brazil right around here and then from there you'd go around the coast but the hard part the first hard part i should say is crossing the atlantic and then you're mostly on the coast and then it's hard again going around the the, the cape if you're going that way but so they're these guys they're singing about getting to the rio grande and um because because then at least things are, are calmer for a little bit okay and uh the verses that are that some someone has made up these verses to go with the melody and uh and they're sort of an unrelated story but they're st we're still hollering about the rio grande so your part is uh you you have after the first line you, you know i'm gonna say we were sick on the, da, 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 and you say way for rio okay like, way for rio you have to sing it epically and then the the second line you have to sing is and we're bound for the rio grand okay so that's it and there's a chorus which you'll get it's basically the same thing but i'm going to do a couple of verses before we get to the chorus so, we were sick on the beach and our money was gone way for rio so we signed on this packet and drive her along and we're bound for the rio grande there were some of us sick there were some of us sore way for rio we had scuffed all our grub we were looking for more and we're bound for the rio grande now the chorus and away bullies away Way for Rio, sing fare thee well, my Liverpool girl, and we're bound for the Rio Grande. We're a deep water ship and a deep water crew. Way for Rio, but we don't like the dub, no, I'm sure that we do, and we're bound for the Rio Grande. And away, bullies, away. Yep. Way for Rio, sing fare thee well, my Liverpool girl, and we're bound for the Rio Grande. Oh, where are you bound to me, bully boys all? Way for Rio, we're bound to the southward, me bully boys all, and we're bound for the Rio Grande. And what will you do there, me bully boys all? Way for Rio, we'll dink for our fortune, me buddy boys all, and we're bound for the Rio Grande. So he with the wheel, boys, oh, he long and strong. Way for Rio, and sing a good chorus of a bunny good song, and we're bound for the Rio Grande. And away, bullies, away. Way for Rio, 
Sing fare thee well, my Liverpool girls, and we're bound for the Rio Grande. And we're bound for the Rio Grande. <laughs> Thanks. You know, in uh, a lot of these songs, there's the ones in English anyway, there's a, a strong tradition of uh, mispronouncing foreign names. And I see it as sort of a little bit uh, disrespectful. Nice to meet you, Jody. Um, um, but uh, it, it's, it's, it's a little bit disrespectful, but it's also uh, sort of self-deprecating. I think these guys, they, they're just, they can't even, they can't even try to pronounce things properly. So I, I sometimes use the, uh, the traditional mispronunciations. Are there any, uh, is there another re re song request before I just sort of slide through my list? I mean, I don't, I don't know if you guys have know a lot of the, the sea shanties out there, but if there's, if there's one in particular that anyone wants to hear, I'll do one more and then I'll, I'll, uh, take some, some questions. Uh, yes. How about, oh, Hall on the Bowling. This is a beautiful one. This is another hauling one. I don't need the words. So basically, after every line, I say, I'm going to say, Haul on the bowling, so we're lying in the morning. And you respond with, Haul on the bowling, the bowling, haul. After every line. Easy. Haul on the bowling, so we're lying in the morning. Haul on the bowling, the bowling, haul. Haul on the bowling. Our bully ships are rolling, haul on the bowling, the bowling hall, haul on the bowling, kitty is my darling, haul on the bowling, the bowling hall, haul on the bowling, so early in the morning, haul on the bowling, the bowling hall. Hall on the bowl and Kitty lives in Liverpool. Hall on the bowl and the bowl and hall. Hall on the bowl and the old man is a growling. Hall on the bowl and the bowl and hall. Hall on the bowl and so early in the morning. Hall on the bowl and the bowl and hall. Oh, haul on the bowling, it's a couple of weeks to payday. Haul on the bowling, the bowling haul. Haul on the bowling, the bowling haul. And that's my song. Roll me bully boys. Oh, is that the one that, um, roll me bully boys. Is that the one that Alan uh, Doyle did recently? If um, it's like Romy. Um, no. Oh boy, I can't remember it off the top of my head. I've just had like a major blank. Um, I'll see if I can find a little bit of it on Spotify. Um, Make it stop. Make it stop. <laughs> um. Um. Yes, I don't. I don't know that. I don't know that one. Um. It's a Are lovely, there... it's a lovely one. I highly recommend it. Okay, okay. I th yeah, I think I think it's one Alan Doyle put out recently. I'm not... Um. So, other questions? Uh, questions from uh, students or uh, others about uh, anything to do with the shanties? Oh. You know, there's um, I, I, I shouldn't say shanties are awesome. Great, you know, there's a uh, there's a French one that I wanted to do here. I'm gonna do a couple of verses of uh, Le Capitaine de Saint Malo. There aren't a lot of um, there aren't a lot of so French sea shanties that are um, the same sort of call and response as uh as the English ones, but there are a few. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to sing a bit of this one here and, uh, you'll, you'll get the responses. <laughs> <laughs> 
Le capitaine de Saint-Malo, Ali Allo, qui fait la pêche au cachalot, Ali 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 Allo, Ali Allo, il a trois filles qui font la peau, Ali Allo, la première va Valparaiso, Ali, 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 Allo, Ali, Allo, la deuxième à Rio de Janeiro, Ali, Allo, la troisième à San Francisco, Ali, 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 Allo, Ali, Allo, il donne la goutte à ses matelots, Ali, Allo, à grand coup de bord de guindeau, Ali, 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 Allo, Ali, Allo, Ali, 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 Allo, Ali, Allo. That's a great, uh, thank you. That's a, uh, one, of, one of the really nice sort of pure shanties in, in French. A lot of the French uh, sailor songs are sort of like the Wellerman, you know, songs about the sea or songs that refer to nautical themes. Thank you. Thank you very much. We still have a few minutes if there are more questions. Other Christopher, I'm not sure if you have a, a plan. Sorry about that. Um, let's see. This is lovely. Okay, so if there are no more questions. Okay, so I think um, we have a satisfied um, group here, John. So <laughs> awesome. So thank you. That's thank you. Good. Thanks so much. Awesome. Thanks. I'm glad you enjoyed. Awesome. So thank you very much to the Coast Guard team for coming and sharing about. Um, life as a coast guard the opportunities that are available and um the the, the how exciting it is to be a coast guard um, a member of the crew and a team and thank you as usual for sean um to you for sharing and um, i'm going to just include in the chat the links to the survey that is a requirement by our funders so if all participants if you have not um, completed the survey as yet I would um, encourage you to do so by following the link and we have it in English and French. So once again, thank you all so much for coming and making it another memorable occasion. Mm -hmm.